We're coming to you from Shape, Belgium, headquarters of NATO's military wing. This is where the planning for NATO operations takes place. This week we're rewinding a bit. President Obama will be arriving in Europe on Saturday for the 60th anniversary of NATO. And in honor of President's past, we'll look at the unique challenges they faced along with the NATO alliance over the years. Tonight we start at the beginning, 1949. Five years after the bloodiest war in history, the world faced a new conflict. In Europe, communist forces were suppressing freedoms, setting up what Churchill called an iron curtain across Eastern Europe. The U.S. and Western European nations determined to halt the spread of Soviet aggression and influence. On April 4th, 12 nations met in Washington to sign the North Atlantic Treaty, where President Truman spoke of the need for strength and unity to preserve freedom and maintain peace. For us, war is not inevitable. Men with courage and vision can still determine their own destiny. They can choose slavery or freedom, war or peace. I have no doubt which they will choose. The treaty we are signing here today is evidence of the path they will follow. If there is anything certain today, if there is anything inevitable in the future, it is the will of the people of the world for freedom and for peace. We will now proceed to the signing of the North Atlantic Treaty. Perhaps the most famous article of the North Atlantic Treaty is Article 5, which states that an attack on one alliance member is considered an attack on all NATO countries. It was invoked in the wake of the September 11th attacks. Tomorrow we'll look back at 1969. A pivotal year in so many ways for America and for NATO. Back to you. This is the first time that an Allied headquarters has been set up to preserve the peace and not to wage war. It is our prayer of our people and the grace of God we shall not fail in this purpose. We strive to lift from the hearts of men the fear of the cell block and the slave camp. We strive to establish a Pax Atlantica under which all men may push forward uh, to new heights, to new levels of achievement. Live 60 years of history online at nato.int. Viewer download videos from the past. NATO.INT. Man landed on the moon in 1969, but on Earth that year there were huge challenges. The U.S. was fighting communists in Vietnam. Soviet forces rolled into Czechoslovakia a year earlier to crush a pro-democracy uprising. But there were positive developments, too. The U.S. and Soviets had signed the Non-Proliferation Treaty, limiting the spread of nuclear weapons. In 1969, Richard Nixon spoke at NATO's 20th anniversary summit of the need for continued strength and the hope of better relations with Moscow. We must build an alliance strong enough to deter those who might threaten war and flexible enough to explore new channels of constructive cooperation. President Eisenhower spoke of the need for unity. Listen to his words. There is not much strength in the finger of one hand, he said, but when five fingers are balled into a fist, you have a considerable instrument of defense. We need such an instrument of defense, and the United States will bear its fair share in keeping NATO strong. All of us are also ready, as conditions change, to turn that fist into a hand of friendship. 
Building on the non-proliferation treaty, the NATO alliance and the Soviet Union would reach further agreements in the early 70s, resulting in the Strategic Arms Limitation Treaty, but the Cold War would drag on for more than 20 years. The 1970s marked an era of easing tensions between NATO and the Warsaw Pact, but there was a new issue to clash over. We face the challenge of promoting the human values and human rights that are the final purpose and meaning of our alliance. That's President Jimmy Carter in 1978. Join us tonight on the AFN Europe Report as we continue to look back on 60 years of NATO history ahead of a historic summit this Saturday. That's at 6.45 on AFN Prime Atlantic. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. With a look back at NATO history, I'm Sean Patrick. As this Saturday marks the 60th anniversary of NATO, we examine the past of one of the most successful alliances the world has ever known. A wall through the middle of Berlin came to symbolize the Cold War itself, a man-made barrier separating half a continent from the free world. Then in the late 1980s, a series of major agreements marked the beginning of the end of the Cold War. One of the biggest was the INF Treaty. It eliminated many nuclear missiles and allowed for NATO and the Warsaw Pact to inspect each other's military installations to verify implementation. The INF Treaty took six years of intense negotiations to complete. But on December 8, 1987, just months after he issued his famous challenge to the Soviet leader at Brandenburg Gate, President Reagan met Mikhail Gorbachev at the White House to sign an agreement that seemed out of reach for so many years. This ceremony and the treaty we're signing today are both excellent examples of the rewards of patience. We have listened to the wisdom of, in an old Russian maxim. My Mr. General Secretary, though my pronunciation may give you difficulty, the maxim is dovayai no provayai. Trust but verify. <laughs> you repeat that at every meeting. <laughs> I like it. Мне нравится. By the treaty's deadline of 1991, over 2,600 intermediate-range nuclear arms were destroyed. The Berlin Wall was down, Germany was reunited, and the Cold War itself was over. Today, nine former Warsaw Pact nations, once NATO's sworn enemies, are members of the alliance. With a look back at NATO history, I'm Sean Patrick. Learn more at NATO.int.